What is going on everybody? In this video, I'm gonna show you how we can enter in user input into an array. So let's get started. Before assigning values into an array, our compiler needs to know the size of the array beforehand. We have to first allocate space for the array. Let's begin by creating an array of strings. We'll create an array of strings. We'll enter in some food. I will name this array foods equals add a set of curly braces. And then within this array, you can enter in some values. Pick some food that you like. I'll enter in a pizza, taco, and hamburger. The size of this array is three elements. Once you set a size for an array, normally you can't change it. This array will have three elements. However, all the elements are already filled with values. To create an empty array, you don't want a set of empty curly braces. Then we're creating an array of no elements. Just to demonstrate that, I'm going to print the length of our array foods, foods.length. This is going to give us zero. And we can't assign any values. Even if I attempt to, let's say foods at index zero equals a string of pizza. Here's what happens. Well, we have an exception, an array index out of bounds exception. Before assigning values, we'll want to be sure that we're setting a size of the array, even if it is empty. Instead of assigning a set of values, we'll create an empty array. We'll set our array equal to, use the new keyword, type the data type of our array, straight brackets, and within the straight brackets, we'll set a size, a number. So let's say three. We're creating an empty array that has space for three elements, three values. Let's try this again. The length of our array is three and we can assign the values. So let's say foods at index one equals a taco foods at index two will be a hamburger. I'll print all the foods in this array. We can use an enhanced for loop List the data type, we're working with an array of strings for every food in our array of foods. We will print each food. That would give us pizza, taco, hamburger. We have declared and instantiated an empty array and filled in the values later. Let's modify this program so a user can type in some values. Let's delete these lines. If we're accepting user input, we will need a scanner. We'll declare that and instantiate it. Scanner scanner equals new scanner. Within the set of parentheses, type system.in. Import the class for scanner. Import java.util.scanner. And close the scanner when you're done because I sometimes forget to do that still. Scanner.close. So we have an empty array of three elements. We'll create a for loop to iterate over the length of our array of foods. So for, we'll create a counter of int i equals zero. We'll continue as long as i is less than our array of foods length property, which returns three, because there's three elements. Then increment i by one. During each iteration of this loop, let's do the following. We'll output the following prompt. Enter a food. I'll use print instead of print line because I prefer that. We'll assign our array of foods at index of i. i changes during each cycle. At first, it's zero, then one, then two, then three. We'll set that equal to use our scanner to accept some user input called the next line method. Okay, let's perform a test run. Currently, we have an array with three empty elements. We'll cycle this loop three times because the length property of the array is three. Then print all the elements when we're done. Here's what happens exactly. Enter a food. Pizza, taco, hamburger. Here are the elements within our array of food. Pizza, taco, hamburger. Let's say that we change the size of the array. Let's say four this time. Pizza, taco, hamburger, hot dog. 
pizza, taco, hamburger, hot dog. We're going to make a few changes. Instead of setting a static size for the array, we'll have a user enter in the number of food they would like to enter. We'll replace this number with a variable to determine the size. What we'll do now is we will declare our string array of foods, but instantiate it later once we know the size. We'll output what number of food do you want? I'll use print instead of print line. I'll also create an integer variable of size. I'll declare it, but not yet fill it in until after our prompt. Let's set the size, the size of the array that is, equal to use our scanner and call the next int method. We are accepting an integer. Once we know the size of the array, we can finish instantiating it. Let's take our array of foods that we've declared, but have not yet assigned, and we'll assign it. Our array is made up of strings. We'll use the new keyword, new, list the data type, string. It's an array, so we need a set of straight brackets. And instead of a number, we're going to use our variable. The user is going to determine what this number is going to be. There's one final step. This is specific for scanners. Since we're accepting an integer, and then we're accepting a string for our user input, we have to clear the input buffer. Next integer isn't going to pick up the new line character at the end. So just to demonstrate that, let's say we want one food item. There's still that new line character within the input buffer. We didn't get the opportunity to enter in a food. We are just going to clear our scanner by using scanner dot next line, and that will clear it up. All right, let's try this again. What number of food do you want? I want five, five food items. Enter in some food, pizza, taco, hamburger, hot dog, and sushi. And here's our food, pizza, taco, hamburger, hot dog, sushi. In summary, to enter in values into an array, you'll likely want to create an empty array but you need to know the size of the array first. If the size of the array is predetermined, you can always set that to be a number. Otherwise, if one way or another, if a user is going to determine the size of the array, you'll have to get that from the user, and you can set the size of the array to whatever the user types in. Just be sure to do that before filling in the values. If you would like a copy of this code, you can look in the comments section down below. Be sure that you're looking in the playlist. And well, everybody, that is how to enter in user data into an array using Java.